Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Nation Dunham Refines, and I'm really glad you can join me again for another Rush review. This time, we have a Swedish Armed Forces 24-hour ration, and it's going to be wet food, so not freeze-dried food, right? That's how you know. And then it's going to be menu number two, 3,600 calories worth of a general purpose ration. The main courses are going to be oat porridge with mango and coconut, smoky stew, and Mexican-style tuna pasta. Now, however, I do have something to say. The custom bandits got into it. The custom thieves, they just absolutely tore this open, ravaged it. They didn't take anything. Ziploc tab, you can open it up and whatnot. You don't have to do that kind of crap and whatnot. Let's, uh, let's go through this unboxing and figure out what's inside. Okay, so we have here out meals, flameless ration heater. Ah, tortillas. We have a red, this bright red, blood red packet. What do we have here? Isotonic drinking powder, apple flavored. Red, I thought it was raspberry or strawberry. It's apple. <laughs> it's a Mexican tuna pasta. A couple of protein bars here. Cookies and cream, chocolate flavored. You got the porridge, orange drink, accessory pack, tissues, butt tickets, napkins, chocolate chip biscuits, smoky stew. Look at that gusset, by the way, y'all. Mm, I love a good main course that has a gusset. Granola fruit mix snack. Nut butter, zya. I got this nut butter right here. Mm hmm. A big summer blowout on the nut butter. A fruit bar of some sorts. Have a Earl Grey Fair Trade Puro Tea. All right. Save the rainforest. That's right. Save the flipping rainforest. That is right. This big old spork here that we saw in the uh, Slovakian ration that's on my wall right here. Got a chocolate bar from Orifo. And then we got a Bim Bomb pear flavor, just like in the Slovakian. And a Puro, what is this? Sugar. All right. Well, everyone, that's it for the unboxing. I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I want for breakfast, and we'll get eaten. Hello, everyone, and uh, this is what I chose out for breakfast. And we're going to have that porridge with mango and coconut. I already put hot water in it, so it's already rehydrating. And it smells absolutely inviting and pleasant in there. Next, we're going to have that nut butter and that date blueberry bar. And then that granola fruit snack mix. We're going to wash that down with a orange isotonic drinking powder. Well, that looks good, folks. I want to get into the accessory pack real quick. So, what do we have in here? Ah, uh, we got some gum. Ah, same color as the Swedish flag. Zya. Good for a big summer blowout. Okay. Okay. And we got the disinfection swabs and whatnot. Basically the same stuff in the Slovakian, right? And I guess Outmeals produces, you know, makes the same thing for some other northern, you know, Scandinavian countries. Um, we got the Colombian freeze-dried coffee, some toothpicks. This looks absolutely good. This almost looks like the fruit bar that Bourbon Street Joe has sent me. Uh, a Canadian, the Canadian version. Look at that. Wow, that smells like, like car oil and tires with like date and very natural blueberry. Oh, wow. It also smells like Vegemite. It smells like Vegemite. Smells bad and good at the same time. Ooh. Oh, wow. So there's like sunflower seeds. They got banana chips, papaya, raisins. Wow. Now that is a fruit mix for sure. Well, that is the best smelling orange isotonic drink I have ever smelled in any ration. That just smells so natural of orange. It's like like crushed up oranges, man. That smells so inviting, so perfect to have in the morning. That just smells excellent. Look at that. Look at the color. Well, I have bright lights, so it's it makes it look like it's bright orange, but it's not. It, it kind of looks like orange juice. From, from my eyes, it looks like orange juice. Normal looking and smelling orange juice, orange juice I have ever had in any ration. So excited for this. Hang on, let's go for it. 
Holy crap, man. That is the best juice I've ever had in any ration. It's the best. It literally tastes like crushed up and squeezed oranges. And it's just, it tastes exactly like orange juice. Exactly. It's sweet, tart, natural, very acidic, but not overpowering. That is amazing. If I'm not careful, I could have drank that in one big sip, one gulp. That's Orifo. That is the greatest drink I've ever had in any ration. This is the this is the most exciting part about opening up international rations, because you really don't know what you're getting. You're, and it's it's fun to see, you know, all the things that you know different countries put in, and whatnot. And it's very fun to see what they put in and how it tastes and whatnot. So, all right, so nut butter. Oh, huh. All right. I thought it was going to be peanut butter. It's not. So is this like a 50-50 a, a mix? Let's see. That's a 50-50 mix of natural peanut butter and natural Nutella. That is excellent. It's rich. It's creamy. It's smooth. Perfect to have in the morning because it's light and easy to eat. Quick absorbing energy. It's tasty because it's chocolate. That is excellent. Very pleasant, too. That's good to have in the morning. All right, so for this Vegemite smelling bar, it's supposed to be a date and blueberry bar. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it just smells awful. It smells like Vegemite. And I like Vegemite, the taste of it. it the smell is just awful, but let's go for it. Hell, let me wash. Let me uh, cleanse my palate. It's very date forward, very date heavy, and little to no blueberry. I'm kind of disappointed in that, because I wanted a blueberry bar. Huh. Well, that's pretty disappointing. That's the trickaroo. That's the first trickaroo of 2023. <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's not bad. It's all natural date. It's very pleasant to the palate. Nothing off-putting about it. It's normal. Tastes blind. Tastes great. I like dates. And it has a slight undertone, a hint of honey, and it's very earthy and pleasant. Very delicious. Very sweet. So, I want to go for this mix here. I want to get a banana chip, some of these uh, seeds. There's oatmeal, too, in here. There's a papaya, a couple of raisins. Whoa, look, there's pineapple. I think, hang on, let me go for that. Yep, pineapple. They don't, <laughs> that was the only pineapple in here. <laughs> All right, that's fine. All right, let's try a papaya. Oh, that has an excellent and wholesome chew. Mm. Oh, that is better than candy. That is very delicious, sweet, tangy. That is addicting. That is way better than candy. I mean, if you just got a bag of those, that'd be way more healthy, way more nutritious, and better for your teeth, and better... It's, that's excellent. That'd be really good to have out in the field. Just a bag of these, because that this is way different than other dried uh, papaya I'm used to. It's very, it has a, almost like a fruit pastel kind of chew to it. And it has a way different chew than your typical papaya. Let's go for the mix, hang on. Banana chip. Mm. I love banana chips. It has a good wholesome crunch, chew. Let's go for the raisin. Mm, that was mushy, very mushy. I don't know what happened there. Very earthy, sweet. I could chew, I could eat these all day. All right, let's go for the mix here. Well, no more papaya. I was going to have the papaya for the mix, but let's, let's go for that. Mm, pretty healthy. Not bad. Not bad when you're um, 
waiting for the porridge to heat up, which mine's looks about reconstituted. And it looks soupy in there. That's just my preference. That's how I like my porridge, my oatmeal. But when it comes to my oatmeal, I kind of like it runny just a little bit. All right. Oops. So right off the bat, when I was heating it up, it smelled so inviting, so pleasant, so sweet in there, so natural. So you got uh, mango and coconut up in here. You can kind of see the mango right there. I'm going to go for that right there. Hoping I don't make a mess. All right. Um, hmm. It still turned out to be gloopy and thick and that's all right. I like, that's how I like things in life. You know, I like thick foods. I like thick women. Yeah, that's okay. Very satisfying, very sweet, tangy, tart, but has a nice dull sweetness that is very appropriate for a mango. Kind of like a peach as well. The coconut is bringing me like island vibe. Like I'm going on a vacation there. There's no coconut crunch to be found, but it's in there. It's prevalent and it has a sweet islandy Hawaiian vibe going on. This whole breakfast is like Hawaiian. And as you can see, the orange little bits, there is plenty. The mango in this is plentiful. They're not skimping you out on any kind of mango action. The thickness of this oatmeal is throwing me off a lot because it's sticking to the roof of my mouth. And I don't like that when eating oatmeal. But the mango is so sweet. And has a satisfying chew. This oatmeal is easy to eat. And I'm not going to have any problem finishing it. Although it is, again, thick. And I do like oatmeal kind of runny. What not. Let's see what a little chocolate would do. That does not look right. <laughs> Let's see what the bar in this oatmeal would do. Let's try the bar and the oatmeal. Wow, the oatmeal, I can actually taste the blueberry now. The blueberry is prevalent in the oatmeal, I guess because it gets, the date gets shadowed and carried away with the oat, uh, the co coconut, that the blueberry has now has a chance to shine. And boy, is it shining bright. Oh, that is excellent. That This whole oatmeal is enchanting to my palate. Mmm. It is very delightful, pleasant. Nothing is off-putting. Let's try it with the chocolate. That didn't work as I thought it would. Let's combine the fruit mix with the oatmeal. See what it does for it. All right. Here we go. Oh, that was a superb idea. There's so much going on, and neither flavor is clashing. And it's actually so impressive in this breakfast. The chocolate adds a, a very distinct sweetness that can't be overshadowed. And the raisins, the chips, the mango and coconut, it gives me island vibes. And then the banana chips, again, island islandy vibes. And then the raisins add a very earthy sweetness to it. There's so much going on in this oatmeal now. And nothing is off-putting. Every, every component complements this oatmeal very well with each other. Mm. Mm. Now... I want to try the oatmeal with some orange juice here. Let's see how that kind of tastes. All right. <laughs> this is crazy. What am I doing? Ah. 
that just added some well nice acidity to it. <laughs> That's what that did. This orange juice is the best part of breakfast for me. Absolutely. How the heck did Orpho get it down to the science of making real orange juice in a ration? Absolute best part of breakfast for me. Don't know how Orpho did it, but props to y'all over there in Orpho. What a great breakfast. This was an amazing breakfast. Well, this is how this ration is going. I'm really looking forward to lunch and dinner. The oatmeal, you know, with the porridge and then the bar. There's so much fruit going on. You had like five, you had like five to ten different kind of fruits. This was an amazing breakfast. Anyways, folks, I'm going to go ahead and take it over to lunch. Oh, excuse me. I'll see you guys there. All right, everyone. Hello. Welcome back for the lunch portion of this wholesome, sweet, Swedish ration so far. And for lunch, I'm going to be chowing down on some smoky stew with potatoes and lentils. We got a protein bar because it's going to be a protein packed lunch. We got the chocolate flavored cookies and cream. And then for our dessert, we're going to have some chocolate chip biscuits. Wash that down with our uh, freeze dried Colombian coffee in our Swedish mug here. All right, folks, let's get eating. I already went ahead and boiled the pouch, so all you really need to do is open it up, pour it onto the tray. Ooh, all right. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? All right, folks, let's dig in now. So we got what looks like a carrot, maybe red and green bell peppers. Uh, maybe it's that green bean or asparagus or something up. They got the lentils in there. All right. This looks pretty wholesome and pretty good. Almost overfills the tray, this compartment of the tray, all right? Let's give it a shot. I think, I think there's mushroom in there. Here we go. That is very savory. It has a, a weird sweetness that's going on. It's not weird, but it's savory, not very salty, perfect to have out in the winter and it's perfect for a cold rainy day just pull this out heat it up and warm it up and eat it it's actually really good it's gentle to the palate so it's easy to eat it's quick to eat and it's not offensive to any palate really oh man let's see what i'm talking about anyway the potatoes and carrots have a nice body to them they're not mushy and so that's perfect for morale. I mean, who wants mushy potatoes and carrots, right? It has a spice to it, so you don't need any spice added, like any hot sauce. Very hearty and healthy. And if it tastes great, it's a good morale boost. That is excellent. There's no flavors that's conflicting or harsh. Everything is gentle to my palate. Although I am surprised because this is a Swedish ration, there is no Swedish meatballs or, you know, pickled herring or some sort of fish in here. You know, <laughs> I mean, there's no like Swedish dishes in here, you know, I mean, where are the meatballs at? <laughs> where are the meatballs? I mean, don't get me wrong, this is perfect. This is a perfect dish in my books. I wish I had something crunchy to go with it, though. Even though the potatoes have a nice body to them, they're not crunchy, they're not raw potatoes, and the carrots aren't, you know, raw. They're, they have a perfect snap and body to them. I just wish I had, like, some biscuit or, like, some crackers or even cornbread to fit in here. That would make this meal. Right now, this meal is an eight and a half. You add something to go in it with a maybe like a biscuit or cornbread or like a cracker, and it, this will take us up this meal to a 10. The meat that's in here, very tender, very tender meat. And I think that because there's no salt, they don't give you any salt, you don't need it because it's very salty and savory and very smoky. This meal, the smoky stew is obviously, well, very smoky.
it kind of reminds me eating at a barbecue place at a mon pop shop, right? And like say Nashville, Tennessee, or you know Dallas or Houston, Texas. This, this is a very reminiscing of a barbecue shop, you know, of a mom and pop barbecue shop. Very hearty, very wholesome. You know, you're getting good quality customer service. You know, you're getting the the best of the best because it's mom and pop, and they're getting natural ingredients. And that's what this reminds me of. It's very hearty and healthy, salty and smoky, perfect. It's a good barbecue dish, and very surprised to see it in a Swedish ration. You know, I mean, nothing wrong with it because I like barbecue. I'm from the South. I like barbecue. Mm. Okay, let's time out real quick. Let's go into these protein bars. Whoops. Okay, so this is the cookies and cream flavored. Now, the Slovakian one, look at that shine and glistening. It's like a diamond. Cookies and cream bar I had in the Slovakian ration was absolutely dreadful and disgusting and had artificial cookies and cream flavor. Let's hope this is not what this is. Ugh. Yeah. I took a small bite. Let's go for the coffee. Let's wash it down. Coffee is pretty bitter. And I put the sugar in there. Mmm. Shame they don't give you more sugar or something. Anyway, that cookies and cream bar is absolutely dreadful. It's demoralizing. It's nauseating. It's sickening. It's demoralizing for a soldier or a, tr a Swedish troop in this case. Hor horrific. It's horrid. It's terrible. Absolutely dreadful. Disgusting. Don't know why they keep on putting those cookies and cream bars in these Scandinavian and European countries because it's absolutely disgusting and terrible. And uh, that'll, that'll, that's very demoralizing for a, well, in this case, a Swedish soldier. All right, let's go for the uh, chocolate protein bar. Ugh. I mean, you got to get your protein up, right? That's the idea of protein bars. It's not for taste. It's really not. And when you're hiking around, especially in cold climate conditions like freaking Sweden, you're not going to care what kind of flavor this is. Although, it would be nice to have some... There are some good tasting protein bars out there. And I know that's not the idea of having protein bars. It's for taste. It's for protein and quick... It's a, it's a supplement for food, you know, in case you don't have a, enough protein intake. Well, there you go. You got these protein bars. It'll be a good addition if you gave some good protein bars. Like in the Denmark ration. The Denmark ration had that caramel protein bar was excellent. And I wish I had more of those. And I don't know where I can find them. But those pro that, that caramel protein bar was the best protein bar ever. And you could snack on it like candy. And I think it gave you like 10 or 15 grams of protein. I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was 12, 12 grams of protein. But that was a great tasting protein bar. Very excellent. Good morale boost. And I know that's not the idea of protein bars is for taste. But that's demoralizing. That is nauseating. Sickeningly sweet. It's artificial. I get that. There's no. It has no place in this ration. I mean, everything else was wholesome. The smoky stew is a good main course. And, uh, but these protein bars, I just get them out of here, you know? However, Sweden, as a military, was founded in 1521. And yes, they do have a conscription age of 18 to 48. And they have roughly 26,000 active troops and 33,000 reserve troops. Their budget is 71 krona, or I'm going to put up on the screen the U.S. dollars, which is roughly 1.2% of their GDP, which is... Again, half of what they need to be, they need to be at 2%, they're at 1.2, uh, just above 1%, but, however, this Swedish military policy has kept Sweden out of war through the policy of neutrality. <laughs> of course, right? I mean, it's pretty simple enough. I mean, neutral, if you, if you remain neutral, you're not going to be in any war. I mean, it's it's a good policy. It's, it's the policy of mind your damn business, you know? <laughs> um, so pretty simple enough. Although they have put in a request to join NATO due to uh, the uncertainty 
of this conflict. After World War I and II, the Swedish armed forces were subject to absolute severe downsizing and downgrading of equipment and uh, troops, you know, uh, forces, right? They have to rely heavily on uh, the males to fill in the ranks through conscription, right? That's why they still have the conscription. Despite heavy downsizing through the decades and having a conscription on top of neutrality, or right, of having no allies, they still rank, their military is ranked by the Global Power Index as 24th, <laughs> 24th out of 142 ranked military in terms of Air Force, Navy, Infantry, Landmass, GDP. They still rank top 25. Don't ask how, I don't know, but they still rank top 25, they rank 24th. Well, I was actually shocked and impressed and bamboozled, confuzzled and discombobulated of how they rank so high despite all of those adversities, you know, of conscription and, and uh, downsizing and downgrading and uh, their GDP in, in the military budget. Despite all of that, they still rank top 25 and they only have one supplier. They only have one supplier. And... Um, and does it make sense on paper, but somehow Sweden, the Sweden armors, the Swedish armed forces made it happen. I'm really excited. I like me a good old chocolate chip cookie. And it smells homemade. You know, despite it being in a ration, it smells homemade, smells sweet, smells very wholesome. Smells very buttery too. Like there's like a lot of butter action going on. Huh. I thought that the, the butter and the shortening would be sweet, but well, they're relying on chocolate chips to rely on the sweetness. That's it. I mean, there's no, the shortening, there's not a lot of shortening. And the shelf life on this probably has to be like 10 years. Because there's not a lot of shortening. There's not a lot of sweetness going on. And it's just, I don't know, I can't explain that. I can't. I, my apologies for not explaining it, but it's it's weird. It's a weird cookie, you know? I mean, I don't know. It's not my cup of tea. Well, folks, this was an interesting lunch. The best part about this whole lunch, this whole meal, definitely has to be this barbecue smoky stew with potatoes and lentils. Absolutely savory, delicious, smoky. Very barbecue-y. This probably has to be the best main course in here so far. I know we still have to get to the Mexican pasta. But this is excellent. I could eat this all day. I would. Well, up until menu fatigue kicks in. But, yeah. I'm sorry. You know, everything else just wasn't my cup of tea. And, uh... In my life, normally, I, I go with protein shakes. Just because it's easy, easier to get down. You don't, you, no chewing required, just pop it, drink it, you got your protein. But, again, not to sound like, you know, not to sound repetitive, but when you're uh, in those cold climates in Sweden, you're not going to care. You're just not. You're going to eat, 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 eat. You burn a lot of calories in the snow. You burn more calories in the snow, and that's why they give you a lot more. Look at the Dutch rations. Look at the Dutch rations. If that doesn't show you, you know that you burn a lot of calories or you need more food, I don't know what will, you know? Look at the Dutch rations, look at the, you know, the German, and look at the Russian rations. And some of them are just normal meal rations, but those 24-hour rations, there's a lot of, packs a lot of food in them, because this, those are some cold-ass countries, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, anyway, anyways, folks, I'm going to go ahead and take it over to dinner. I'm really excited about that Mexican pasta, which is why I left it for last I'm really excited. I think that might be the best thing in this in this ration. I'm looking forward to it. Let's head over to dinner. Hello everyone. Welcome to the third and final meal of this excellent, wonderful, wholesome, comforting ration. A Swedish ration. And for uh, tonight's dinner, we're going to have that Mexican tuna with pasta. And then tortillas with that flameless ration heater. And then for dessert, we're just basically gonna have that chocolate bar with the bim bum. And to wash it all down, got that apple drink. And then that Puro Save the Rainforest Earl Grey tea. All right, folks, this looks like good eating. Let's get to it. So now to work this FRH, let's see. 
Uh, ah! Right. All right. Oh, you got two FRHs here. Wow. All right. Emery Mountain. Syrac, Emery, some mountains. And this heating pad is... Woo! That'll knock someone out. Bop. That's going to heat up a meal right there. I think I'll just do one. Maybe two. I don't know. There's the apple. <sighs> smells... Smells like your red, typical red apple. Nothing fancy, nothing extravagant. Just smells sweet, simple, classic. You know, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with keeping it simple. Wow. Oh my gosh. You know, these Orofo drinks, man. Good lord. They just... This reminds me of a... Reminds me of fall, and it reminds me of the red leaves with the red apples, and it's just, that, that's apple juice. How do they do that? What's the science engineering behind making it all natural, real, isotonic drinks in a ration? What's y'all's secret? Mellow, same time, it's sweet, it's very delicate though, it's very delicate to my palate. It's very pleasant to drink. It's very excellent. It's soft, yet light. It's absolutely delicious. So now for the FRH. I, I only put one in there. Uh, should I put two? I don't know. We'll figure it out when we get when we cross those roads. And hopefully we don't cross any roads, you know. I'll leave some air so the steam can ex escape. But I'm just gonna shake it up. Woo! Holy cow! Oh my lord, this oh, I never had that of an instant reaction of an FRH. Good lord. My goodness, out meals. Are you trying to give your troops a heart attack? It's giving me the adrenaline rush I need right now. All right, what a way to start off this ration review for dinner. Oh man, let's try out this chocolate. Oh my gosh. I really thought something exploded or something went wrong. Oh, mm. Mm. Mm hmm okay. I think I burnt my hand in the process. I'm not sure. That was instant. Here, let me let me move this away from mm, from the camera. Mm, ew, damn. So the chocolate is very delicate, it's smooth, it's creamy, it's rich. It's possibly the richest dark chocolate you can get in a ration. That is very excellent. However, if I put this in the FRH, hmm. Let me go do that. That is going to be eaten. I'm going to put this back in its wrapper, right? And then... I'm going to put this in the FRH for a little bit. The chocolate, again, rich. Possibly the richest dark chocolate you can get in a ration. It's creamy. It's smooth. It's light. But not too harsh of a dark chocolate. It's creamy and sweet. But it's not milk chocolate. And it's not bitter, yet it's dark chocolate. It's incredible. Absolutely wonderful. We'll save this for after dinner. So let's check out these um, extras. Wow, that is good dark chocolate. My goodness. Okay, so again, after dinner, let's check out this disinfection swab. 70% ethanol. 1% glycerol. Wow, that is cold. That is very cold to the touch. Not sure how that would go well in uh, in Sweden, though, because you know how cold Sweden is, you know. But, hey, you got to clean your hands, you know, and the smell, it is pretty strong. It's a strong, strong alcohol, and it'll clean your hands, disinfect it, actually. Not only clean it, but disinfect any bacteria on it. It'll disinfect and clean any wounds. It's multi-purpose. It's very versatile. Can't complain with that wet net. It's a pretty good wet net. So for these classic sensitive, these kind of remind me like the, uh, not Mucinex, but um, oh, what's that one called? Oh man, I'm forgetting it. Oh my gosh, my memory is terrible. But I'll put it up on the screen. It's like uh, it's like those um, 
And it's, it's those kind of tissues and it's, you know, to help you, you know, alleviate any, you know, symptoms and whatnot. And it'll help you, calm you, relax you, calm you down. It's very soft on your, you know what, on your bottom. And uh, on your nose, on your face, you know. All right. Stood here long enough. Let's uh, take that out. You know one thing that's missing in here, though? Some pate. You know, for a European ration, you'd think they'd have some pate in here, but I didn't see any pate on the description of the uh, menus uh, the, on, the, on the ration. No pate in here. Well, at least in this menu. Menu number two or something? I don't know, menu number two. Anyway, no pate. You'd think they'd have some pate or crisp bread or something in this European ration. Although I do think that they are missing some <laughs> Swedish meatballs and, you know, some Ikea colored things, you know, like yellow and blue and whatnot. And I'm just, I'm just messing around with the Swedish stereotypes. Save the rainforest tea. Let's see how it is. <coughs> you know what? Screw the rainforest. Burn it down. Chop all the trees down. Oh my gosh. That tea is, woo, that tea is weird. Has a weird, I mean, I know it's Earl Grey, but oof, that's a weird tea. I need, I need something flavorful for a drink. Hang on. There we go. That's perfect. I like that. It's, it's, it's kind of tangy and tart and sweet. And that's what I need right now. None of that save the rainforest crap. What the hell is that kind of tea? Anyway, I think that's done enough for me anyway. I'm going to have dinner. This is, uh, well, I don't know if it got all melted, but... Let's, let's, let's see what it is now. Wait, let's wait for the tortilla. Because let's see if it's melted. Ooh! <laughs> it's kind of melted. It's kind of. All right, we'll get, we'll put that on our tortilla. See, folks? Mm. Got to get creative and innovative for these rations, you know? Okay. So, I think that's, you know, heated up enough, even though it's still going. Need some tongs or something to get this out. Ooh, it's all, all warm and whatnot. Oh, man, that's awesome. Oh, heck yeah. All right. I'm going to go get the main course. Here is the main course. Whoa, they give you a massive portion. Whoa, whoa. Holy smokes. Look at that portion size, everyone. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Well, so you got the tuna, some noodles. I'm trying to get a little bit of everything, man. All right. Oh, man. Here we go, folks. Wow. Look at that. Here we go. Oh, that is bright and vibrant. Oh, that is excellent. I like that. Oh, that is... Oh, wow. Oh, I'm getting like a, a bright kind of vibe. It's very bright and wonderful and, and very colorful. And it's very delicate. Very delicate dish, and it's soft, and it's light, and it's not going to bog you down. Everything, the kidney beans, the corn have a nice body to them, so they're not mushy, and I, I respect that. I respect that a lot. The tuna, you can taste on its own, has a very, this tuna is very good, it's very classy. It's a good quality tuna, and it's not a cheap tuna. You're not, you're not, they're not skipping you out on some cheap tuna. This is good, classy, fancy, rich tuna. It's a very rich tasting tuna. I mean, if we can take a look at the tuna right there. I mean, again, it, it, it's a good quality tuna. You're, you're not getting cheap crap. Mm. And the noodle, not mushy, but not al dente. I respect that. And look at the oil. I mean, you're going to need that in those cold climate freaking Swedish winters. You know, this is excellent. And the spice, whoops, and the spice is not overpowering. So let's look at the tuna here. This tuna is very, the tuna and oil is good. That it, That is a damn good tuna. They're not, they're not giving you cheap crap. Well, that is excellent. And the spice, it's very spicy, you know, and, and for a white guy, 
you know, that's, I mean, that's not overpowering. I'm fine with that. It's very savory, delicate, and it's light dish. Oh, this is delightful. Very pleasant to eat. And it's very wholesome and hearty. I like that. Mmm. Mmm. I hit a bone there. Mmm. Mmm. So at least you know this thing is real. I mean, I could taste it before the bone. And that was delicious. And the bone had good flavor. And it wasn't, it wasn't too hard on my teeth. So what am I waiting for here? What am I doing? I got this wonderful dish here. I would love to put it on a tortilla. And the melted chocolate put it on the uh, tortilla as well. See, if you do that, if you heat it up, you're wasting about like 25% chocolate. So if you have time to, if you have enough time to sit down and enjoy yourself, and you have like a supply kitchen nearby, then you can do this. But otherwise, if you're just out and about and you have no, you're nowhere near base camp, you're nowhere near a supply kitchen, you wouldn't do this because it's a waste. It's a waste of food. I mean, I'm probably going to lick it. Mm. Mm -hmm. But, right, you're wasting like 25% chocolate if you do that. And you just wouldn't do that if you're out in the field, if you're just out in the middle of nowhere. As a Swedish troop, you wouldn't do that, you know. It'd be very impractical to do that just because you're wasting calories. And dark chocolate is way more healthier than milk chocolate. And you're wasting all of that nutritious, you know, whatnot. So you just wouldn't do that. It would be very impractical as a Swedish troop. Anyway, let's give that a shot. Oh, man, a chocolate tortilla. <laughs> let's give that a shot. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. What a good dessert. <laughs> oh, man. Your command gave you, your sergeant or lieutenant told you to sit down, chill, relax for a bit. That'd be a good idea. A good change of pace, too. Because instead of just eating chocolate like it is or tortillas like it is, we could do that. Oh, that is excellent. Oh, man. I'm so glad I thought of that. Anyway. Back to the main course here. I like this. This is a great main course. This is a great ration so far. And, uh, well, not so far. We're about the end of it. We're at the end, folks. <laughs> but, yeah, this is awesome. Now, I fold, I make a pretty bad tortilla burrito thing. You know, yeah. I know. I know. I'm not very good. I'm just a white boy, you know. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Mmm, this is so enjoyable. Both of these main courses, excellent. Mmm. This dish is amazing. It has to be top three in my top three favorite main courses of any ration I've tried. It has to be. I'm making a, a ton of mess right here. <laughs> I'm almost full. I'm at like 80% capacity in my stomach, and there's still a crap ton of food here. Man, they don't joke around with the portion size, do they, over there in Sweden? All right, folks, I think I'm going to call it on the main course. I'm, I'm almost full. I should probably look up on YouTube some tutorials how to fold, you know, whatnot. But all right, here we go. The chocolate tortilla thing. Mm. That's very good. I like that. You combine that silky smooth and rich, melty, gooey chocolate, put that on a tortilla, and it's heavenly. Absolutely delicious. Good snack after. Well, it's probably a good snack if you're just out and about, you're sitting around, marching and whatnot. You, so here's what you do. You'd make it beforehand, and then as soon as your command gives you the okay to get back up and start marching, you pull that out of your pack and just start munching on it. Because by the time... By the time you heat it up and put it in a tortilla, because Sweden is so cold, it already it already freeze in the um, in your pack in your little pocket. And while you're marching around, walking, pull that out, start snacking on it. That'd be a great morale boost to have right there. All right, folks. So next, um, got the little 
after dinner refreshments, we got the chewing gum and the bimbap. I've had the bimbap in the Slovakian ration, and it's great, you know. I almost want to, um, you know, I uh, will do it just for the review. It's it's very peary, very natural pear. Mm. Oh yeah, that's good. It's very sweet, and it's a great thing to have when you're just marching around or waiting for orders or just waiting for your main course to heat up. You could have that beforehand, you know. You don't have to do what I just did and wait after dinner. You could have that before it. It's great. It's sweet, all natural pear. And if you love pears, you're going to freaking love that. Trust me. If you love pears, there you go. That is excellent. Now for the chewing gum. I've also had this in the Slovakian, I think, if I remember correctly. And this was just, this wasn't too good, if I remember correctly. Hang on. Wait. Oh, that's good. Is that all natural peppermint? Hang on. Is there something in here? Oh man, it's all it's all in Swedish. How am I supposed to how the heck am I supposed to read it? <laughs> Literally it's all in Swedish. <laughs> I think that's all natural peppermint. What what a great way to end dinner here. Alright, folks. I think I had my fair share for dinner. I'm absolutely full. And I'm starting to burp and burp everywhere, so that's that's how you know I'm ready to go. I'm done. What a wonderful meal to end off. This wonderful Swedish ration because this is pro I knew that this meal would be the best. I, I knew I saved this for the last, the best for last. You got the, ch the chocolate tortillas, main course, the apple drink, everything in it was perfect. What a way to end off this wonderful Swedish ration. I really enjoyed the Swedish ration, and I hope you did too. I'm Mission Diner Refines, where I'm on a quest to consume unique rations from all around the world. And for tonight's review, a Swedish Armed Forces 24-hour ration. Fortunately, that tea was um, pretty whack. So, screw the rainforest. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, yeah, tea wasn't that great. But this was a Swedish 24-hour ration, guys. Thank you guys for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys in another ration review. Goodbye.